she progressed and stopped walking yesterday. Take care of her, baby. You got it, I promise. So this morning he woke up to him dragging his pelvic limbs. No, but the worry is that he acutely stopped walking yesterday. He does indeed have a slip disc in his lower back. Let me get the pink sheet. Hi, Candy. Not doing too well when it comes to the skin issues. They said that it's from the prednisone. It is. Yeah. He wants to know if there's a way we can probably lower it or anything like that. So one of the negatives of long-term steroid use. So we always talk about it of, you know, side effects of steroids include increased thirst, urination, appetite, drinking, peeing, panting, stuff like that. Occasionally with long-term high doses, um, you can see her, her belly is really big. Her muscles are, are skinny. She's losing kind of her hair, um, but then she also has developed calcification in the skin called calcinosis cutis. Uh, it looks like it's infected, it smells like it's infected. So it's one of the balances of too much prednisone versus you know not enough. Obviously when we don't give enough, um, dogs can have their neurological symptoms return depending on what the underlying cause is. So uh, it's one of the reasons that we try and keep a really close eye on things, but occasionally either we lose track of the patient, you know, we don't have as good of communication, or sometimes um, what happens to be Candy's case is Anytime we try and go below where we'd like it to be, symptoms come back. So, um, you know, we're always trying to find that balance. So, um, we will try and decrease the prednisone today. Um, obviously, get her on some antibiotics because she does have an infection or certainly looks infected secondarily. And there are some treatments for calcinosis cutis. You know, we usually involve a dermatologist or the primary care veterinarian for, for most of that. Emma, yes, I just, this is Lola, who's a post up on L12. Um, she looks pretty darn good. Mom said that she's doing well, trying to run strong. Um, overall, is pretty comfortable. She's ambulatory. Um, postural reactions in the pelvic limbs are still pretty delayed, but overall is pretty comfortable. Um, Hello. I don't know. I don't know what you do. Your proportions are all messed up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she's got a waist. Yeah. Compared yeah. to her waist, compared to she's her perfect. shoulders, or yeah. <laughs> she can have one small room. Okay. She's cute though. No, super cute. Okay. No I, was, like I wasn't referring to her, like, just her. No, I know. <laughs> she's small and compact, too. Like she's a compact Frenchie. She has no nostrils. And then there's you with your long, skinny nose. Oh, your proportions aren't anything to brag about, huh? <laughs> Look at you. This is Emma. She is our approximately four-year-old female with Dotson. She's coming in because 10 days ago, she acutely became ataxic in her pelvic limbs. She progressed and stopped walking yesterday. Mom, you want a frosty? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Vanilla chocolate. Small chocolate, please. <laughs> you gotta get the fries, too. Oh, well, yeah, I did it. <laughs> Come on, Emma. She can move. Go ahead. Okay, perfect. That's kind of our new thing now, like right at around 8 o'clock when Marianne and I are like out of patience. <laughs> but kids are winding up as opposed to winding down. We'll like get in the car and we'll drive around. And end up at Wendy's. End up at Wendy's. Yep. It's a good routine. It is. And specifically her problem is affecting the spinal cord of the back. So her front legs are normal, but her back legs are, are having difficulty uh, with their function. So that tells me the problem somewhere between the front legs and the back legs. What I can tell you just by looking at her is she has a neurological problem affecting her mid-back spinal cord and it's of a moderate to severe category. What I cannot tell you just by looking at her is what the cause is. But it's a relatively short list of possible causes. Those possible causes are things like a slipped disc, which we'll talk more about, things like meningitis, which we'll talk a little bit about, and then other things like infection, tumor, stroke, etc. MRI is going to give me a picture of the spinal cord of her back and tell me what the cause is. 
if it's a slip disc, it's gonna tell me which disc it is because her back is made up of multiple discs. And it's gonna tell me, is it more off to the left, more off to the right? And then it's also going to tell me, is surgery the best way? Usually, with as affected as she is, if we do an MRI and if we find a slip disc, usually the answer is going to be surgery, but occasionally we'll do an MRI in a dog that's as affected as she is, and I say, well, you know what? The, the disc is relatively small, and I think she can get better without surgery. If it's a slip disc, hey, it's bad enough for you to say the only way is surgery. Once she has the surgery, what are the chances of her walking back again? The advantages of doing an MRI are knowing what we're dealing with and assuming we find a slip disc, the advantages of surgery are we've got about a 95% chance of helping her walk again. Okay. So that's not a 100% guarantee, but it's pretty darn good odds and it's better than the, the odds of trying medicine alone, which is about 55 to 60% chances. So the advantages of doing MRI and surgery are one, knowing what we're dealing with, two, we've got great chances of fixing this, and then three, it also makes it less likely that this happens to her in the future. Because she has discs up and down her back and her neck, she is at risk of another one going bad in the future. Right. What we do at surgery is we do a preventative procedure to make it less likely that we have another problem in the future. It doesn't make it a 0% chance of another problem, but it makes it less likely. Um, we'll get started on her. All right, great, perfect. Thank you, doctor. You got it. We will talk to you soon, okay? Thank you, Dr. Wong. Thank All you. Right, thank you. Bye-bye. Take care of her, baby. You got it, I promise. Two things. Yes. Um, most importantly, there's a Frosty for you in the freezer. <laughs> great. Two. <laughs> Eat it now, because it's refrozen Frosty. I know. Two, Theo. I don't know if you remember, but I think he was one of my Fresh patients. Dog. Yeah, kind of yeah. He came in for back pain. He's here for his post-op uh, recheck. Incision looks great. I took the staples out. He's walking. He's comfortable. Mom is very happy. Emma is gonna check in. Um, apparently, we have blood work. They're sending it over. So this is Tyson. He acutely stopped walking yesterday. Um, he doesn't have any movement in his rear limbs. We'll okay. get him down to show you that in a moment. So you can see his postural yeah, reaction right deficits in his pelvic limbs. <laughs> Normal patellar reflex. Okay. Got a little bit of a decreased um, withdrawal one, reflex. The the there we go. On the chart, but that carrots in there. Okay. What? What? <laughs> what? It's right. a miracle. Yay. So he he can now feel his legs, so that's a great Okay, okay, okay. Not gonna touch you anymore until Oh look what she's got. Another one. You got a good nose. Mm -hmm. This is Dexter for your mount tech Frenchie. He yelped out yesterday after chasing his ball. He seems <laughs> fine at eating normal. He was just panting a little bit, so they gave a dose of gabapentin, thinking he was painful. This morning, the owner's father is pet sitting, so this morning he woke up to him dragging his pelvic limbs. Super He's huge. He's a one. <laughs> You're longer than the... Yeah. Than the mat? Yeah, the mat. <laughs> no, but the worry is... No feeling? I'm sad. <laughs> Obviously, we'll, we'll we'll check 20 minutes later after we uh, <laughs> put him in that cage. You gotta switch him out. <laughs> the miracle cage. So the, the worry, Tracy, is do we since we're paraplegic, no deep pain, do we also have myelomalacia that's ascending to the the front legs? Did we get the? I didn't look if there's axials yet. I don't know. No, they're still running. Okay. T thirteen L one on the right. Owner's called. Doctor Flores. Yeah, Emma. Emma. I'll call her right now. I was listening to this while I was driving the kids to school, and like twenty minutes later, when I had arrived <laughs> at Southeast Veterinary Neurology, I realized that I was listening to to Elmo sing. The
So we're looking at Dexter's MRI. Um, this is his spinal cord here, his right side, his left side. And you can get the sense that maybe the, the spinal cord's deviated a, a little bit here. One of the things you can see is the spinal cord is just brighter or hyper intense, brighter than it should be. If we look in cross section over here, um, this is the right side, this is the left side, this is the spinal cord, and this slice is made right here at, uh, this particular dog has eight lumbar vertebrae, so eight, seven, six, five, four, and L4, five. As we move cranial, we can see some material here at three, four, off on the right side. And as you go a little bit further forward, we start to see there's hyperintensity of the gray matter. So I don't know if you can appreciate just sort of the center of the spinal cord here is, is, is brighter than it should be. Um, that's concerning. So again, we're worried that this dog might be developing myelomalacia. The chances of getting better since we're no deep pain are only about 50%, but there's about a 15% chance of developing myelomalacia. That's, so that's our concern, but his best chance of getting better is with surgery. So uh, that's why we're staying late tonight to do his surgery and um, fingers crossed, hopefully he'll be the good 50% as opposed to the, the 35% that doesn't walk or the 15% that develops myelomalacia. Last surgery was a, a little dachshund that was non-ambulatory paraparetic. Couldn't walk, but could still move the pelvic limbs, the rear limbs just a little bit. Big slip disc at T13L1 uh, that crept up to T12, 13. Surgery went very, very well. Um, expectation is 95% you know, chance that she's going to regain the ability to walk. Mom and dad are super duper nice. Uh, I just got off the phone with them to let them know that we were done with surgery and that their puppy was awake. You know, they have kind of all the typical questions, which, you know, is, is very, very good. You know, how long is she going to be here? And, you know, we, we try and answer that ahead of time, but lots of times in the initial consultation, there's just so much there that, you know, they, they forget and want to ask again. And actually dad, who wasn't at the consultation, you know, was there, so he had a lot of these questions. How long is she gonna be here? Most dogs stay here about three to five days after surgery. Um, you know, when will she be walking? Uh, every dog's different. Some dogs get up and walk the next day. Many dogs that were that came in unable to walk are able to walk by the time they leave here post-surgery, three to five days later. The majority are able to walk by the time they come back for their suture removal. And so what I try and talk with owners about is, you know, surgery went great um, based off of the dog's category, uh, based off of how effective we were going into surgery, based off how surgery went you know, 95% chances we're going to regain the ability to walk and the timeline of, you know, is it tomorrow versus five days from now versus two weeks from now isn't quite as important in the, in the long run, our expectations that we're going to regain the ability to walk. They asked about feeding, um, if we're gonna feed her tonight. Uh, we typically don't feed the night of surgery, but usually, you know, the following morning, late morning, uh, she should be getting food. just finished Tyson's MRI. Uh, he does indeed have a slip disc in his lower back, mid to lower back, so we're getting him ready for surgery right now. It'll be probably a good hour and a half or so, two hours, um, but we will call you when we're done and he's awake. Okay, thank you very much, I appreciate it. You got it, we'll talk to you soon, okay? Okay, sounds good. Thanks, bye-bye. Okay, let's take that picture. So what I'm going to do is put that right at L5. Hopefully when we go to surgery, there'll be this nice bright yellow thing. But now when I go into surgery, I'll just find the yellow spot and I'll say that is L5. And we'll know where L34 and L45 are based off of that. Just out of habit and superstition, I'm going to go back and look at it one more time. <laughs> and 
Pen is in five. And then I say it out loud so that when I forget, someone else heard me say it. 